In this tutorial we're going to show you how to create the model of the lioness that you can see on the screen. I'm going to start with a set of vectors that have been edited from some clip art that was kindly supplied to us from the website www.vectorart.com. Those vectors have been edited and prepared for modelling and in this case we're not going to focus on the drawing we're just really going to focus on the modelling tools. I'm going to work through using the create shape function to make the basic shapes for our lioness and then we're going to finish it off using the smoothing and the very powerful sculpting tools that are available in the software. Let's begin by starting a new copy. Let's come over and click on the icon to open an existing file and from the project folder we're going to select our edited vectors and these are in a file called lioness-vectors.crv3d we'll just hit the open button there. So these vectors have been prepared to start the modelling process using the drawing tools in the software. In this case we're just going to focus on taking these 2D shapes and building them into a 3D model. To help us stay organised during the modelling process the artwork has been organised onto layers. If we come over and click on the drop down arrow for the layer manager we can see the five layers we have. If I just toggle their visibility with the light bulbs you can see that we have a vector for the tail here, then some vectors for the back leg, the body, the front leg and the head. What we're going to do is work our way through these layers creating the different shapes for each of those regions of the animal. So to start with let's just reduce down so we're just working on the layer that we want to model. So I'm going to undraw the last four layers here and you'll notice when I undraw a current layer the title of that layer turns red and typically what that's showing you is you want to change onto a layer that's currently visible. So here I'm going to come up and select the tail layer so that you can see the text in bold and you can see that as my current layer here in the layer manager. So with just the tail layer visible I'm going to close the layer manager and now what I want to do is come into the modeling um, part of our design tab. So here you can see we're in the drawing tab. If I come down to the bottom, modeling tab is next to that so I can click on that and access the modeling tools to start producing our 3D shapes. In a similar way that we can use the layers to help us stay organized with our 2D entities, we can use the levels in the component tree to help us stay organized as we create 3D objects. So here for the first level I'm just going to right mouse click on this go to rename level and I'm going to call this level tail and any components that I want to create for the tail I'm going to place in this particular level. In this case that's only going to be a single component. So we can see both the 2D view and the 3D view. I'm just going to tile the windows here so we click on the icon I can see the 2D view on the left, the 3D view on the right. I'm going to select this vector the function I'm going to use to build all my shapes for this particular model is the Create Shape tool. So we're going to click on the first icon under the modeling tools here and what this tool allows me to do is specify a set of simple profiles and a variety of modifiers to those in order to generate a shape within that 2D region that I have selected as a vector. Now in this case what I want to use is something that's going to give me quite a well-defined edge so I'm going to need a fairly steep angle I'm going to use a rounded shape but then what I'm going to do is scale the height so that it doesn't become too bulbous. So let me show you what I mean. If we come over and we're going to choose the curve profile which is the first of the three shapes here and the angle I can either type in or I could use a slider here. Maybe I'm going to slide this up to around 80 degrees and when I let go you'll see that the 2D view and the 3D view automatically update. Now I talked about the shape being very bulbous by using this steep sided angle and you can see that's what's occurred here. So what I can do now is come in and add some modifiers to this to control that. First of all I'm just going to change my base height here to be zero. I don't want any kind of um, edge height there and I hit the space bar in order to apply that. And then I'm going to come down here and going to ask the software to scale the height of this. And you can see the value in there at the moment is set to 0.05, so it's scaled that down. And that's probably a bit too much. In this case, I'm going to try a value of 0.2, hit the space bar again to apply that. And I can see I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. That's still got some good round shape to it, but it's not quite as high as it was before when I was just letting it find its own height based on the angle. 
So if I'm happy with the parameters I've set there, we can go ahead and give this component a name, hit apply and hit close. And we'll see that we've got a component now that's been added into the level for this particular um, set of components here. Now in this case, I only have a single shape representing the tail. So that level is actually complete and I'm ready now to move on to the next thing that I want to make. So let's just reset the view in the 3D view there to the ISO. I'm going to come down to the layers, I'm going to undraw the tail layer and you can see that's undrawn the vector, it's also undrawn the grayscale for my 3D object, but it hasn't undrawn the 3D object itself, so it's only managing the 2D representation of that 3D part. Now I'm going to switch on the back leg layer, I'm going to select that so it's current and I'm going to come back to the modeling tab and continue creating new shapes. To do this, again to stay organized with the 3D objects, I'm going to right mouse click over this particular level and say insert new level. Right mouse click on the name of that and go to rename and we'll just call this level back leg and click in order to accept that. And that means that any new components we create now will be placed on that level. Let's come over and I'm going to select the outer shape here for the back leg. I'm going to click on the icon again to create shape from vectors and the software will remember the values that we had in here and in this case I actually want to take exactly the same values. So all I'm going to do is come in and we'll call this back leg base and I'm going to hit apply and at this point I'm just going to hit close for the moment there. Now you can see at the moment I have my two levels set to add to each other. So when the pieces overlap, one is going on top of the other. What I would actually like is for these to sort of blend in or merge together. So working from the bottom up here, I have the tail, then the next object in my list is going to be the back leg. And by changing the combine mode for this, I can choose how it will interact with the first object in the list. So in this case, I'm going to go over the level right mouse click and change the combine mode to merge and now you can see in the 3D view those two shapes are now blending together. Now if we come back to our 2D view what I can do is create another component in here to add the detail on the top of the leg. Now that detail I want to add on to the component we created called the back leg base but I want it to merge with the tail and that's what's going to happen now with this particular settings that I've got for the components and for the level. Let's show you how that will work. Select the vector here and shift and select this vector here so I'll just zoom in to show you that with the mouse wheel. So I've got those two inner vectors selected so they're the vectors that the shape will be created between now. We're going to click on create shape from vectors and this time I'm going to change the name of this to back leg detail. I'm going to hit apply and if we just zoom in to the 3D view with the mouse there I can see that that is doing what I expected in adding on to the base shape and also blending with the tail but it's a little strong so what I'm going to come into here and do is just reduce the height of this down a little maybe we'll bring this down to something around 0.15 of an inch I could also type that value in there I can see that's updated and I'm happy with the way that looks now so I can go ahead and hit close so if we take a look at what's happening in the component tree, we have our tail level with the tail component on it. I can switch that on and off from the 3D view with the visibility checkbox there. And then the next level that's combining with this is set to merge. So the back leg level is set to merge and the two objects on that level are being added together, but then merged with the first level that we have in the list here. Let's just click in the 2D view now, hit F to fit and we'll also uh, put the 3D view back to an ISO view there. Now we're ready to create the next shape so I'm going to come back to the layer manager, I'm going to switch off the back leg layer and again you can see there that the 2D representations of that disappear. I'm going to switch on the body layer, I'm going to select the um, name of that so that it becomes the current layer so that I'm creating the grayer scales on there and we'll come back to the modeling tab. Now what I want to do is create another new level to put these shapes onto and I also want to set this to merge with everything that I've already built. So I'm going to right mouse click, 
insert new level, right mouse click and rename that and we'll call that level body and hit enter and then finally right mouse click and change the combine mode for that to merge so that as I start creating components on that level I know that they'll be merging with everything that's come before that in the component tree. So the shapes for this and the rest of our components will essentially be a sort of repeat of what we've already done. So I'm going to come up and select the outer vector for the body, click on create shape from vectors and in here I'm just going to take the same angle and type in a height of 0.2 and come down and we'll call this body base and hit apply. Then we'll click on the button to start a new component and now I'm going to select the vector for the body detail here and we'll go ahead and type in a value of 0.15 call that body detail and hit apply again and close and so we can see exactly the same setup is being applied here we've got the two shapes adding together on the level and then merging with the previous levels so let's continue to repeat this process now I'm going to come down click on the layers tab undraw the body layer switch on the front leg layer and select it so it's current we'll come back to the modeling tab and a right mouse click and say insert new level, right mouse click rename new level and call this front leg and right mouse click and set the combine mode to merge again. Now we're going to select the outer vector here and come up and click on create shape from vectors again. Um, once more we can set this value to 0.2 and we'll call that front leg base and hit apply and then I'm going to click on the start new component button and now I want to select uh, all the vectors except the outer one so I'm just going to zoom in here to help me do that I'm going to grab um, these vectors so we'll select this one shift and select this one shift and select this one so three vectors in this case and what we'd like to do now is set that to be uh, let's try 0.15 we'll call that front leg detail hit apply and if we take a look there I can see that this has got quite small regions in it so by scaling it up that much I've actually created a more rounded look than I have in other areas so I'm probably going to um, tone that down a bit we'll actually come and use a slider here and just tone that down maybe closer to around 0.11 something like that if I'm happy with that I can hit apply and close and then we can go ahead and come down to the layers switch off the front leg layer switch on the head layer select that so it's current back to the modeling tab right mouse click insert new level right mouse click rename level and we'll call that head and then right mouse click and combine mode set to merge again so I'm going to select this vector here click on create shape Again we'll put in a value of 0.2 and we'll call that head, base, hit apply and then we'll go ahead and select the other vector here. For the head we'll make sure we click on start new component first so we accept that shape we've got there. Click on this vector outline here and for this again we'll put in a value of 0.15. head detail and hit apply and I can see again that 0.15 is a little bit much for that so maybe we'll tone that down to 0.1 hit the space bar to accept that even that looks a bit high so maybe we'll come in and just use the slider here to reduce this down a bit and that looks pretty good there I'm happy with that so at this point we can go ahead and hit close if we look at the 3D view we can just maximize it there I can see I've created a set of shapes based on my vectors I've really kept uh, my model well organized using the levels and using the layers to help me only um, access the vectors that I wanted for a particular um, part of the modeling process and at this stage we're pretty close to going into the sculpting process however there are a couple of adjustments I'd like to make to the model I'd like to make the top part of the back leg 
a little bit more prominent so that it sticks up a bit further in relation to the shapes around it and also do the same with the front leg here. So in effect I want to tilt up the back leg and tilt up the front leg. Let's go ahead and click on the Z icon up the top here to view down the Z axis and then we'll come in and make those adjustments straight from the 3D view here. Now I could come over and select the component from the component tree list if I wanted but also I can right mouse click over an area where I know that component is and it'll show me the different components under the arrow. So in this case I've right mouse clicked and what I want to choose is back leg base. So if I click on that you can see that becomes selected and all I need to do now is click on it again once in the 3D view here in order to bring up the transform handles. So these handles would let me move it around, rotate it, uh, change the scale of it, but what I want to access is the ability to tilt this up in the sort of um, 3D plane. So this dot at the bottom here, you can see this solid blue dot, if I go over that and click on that with the left mouse button, then that will bring up the form here and the same way that I can get to this form using the properties icon here from the modeling tools. So I can adjust things like the combine mode or the um, scale of this or we can come in and check the box to tilt this up. So by checking this box it's activated the set button here and when I click on the set button what the software is expecting me to do now is digitize two points with the mouse in the 3D view the first point will be the anchor point that this um, shape will tilt up from. So I'm going to click down around the toes here. And then the second point is going to be up around the top of the body here. So that's the point that the shape will tilt up by whatever angle I specify. So I'm going to click up there, specify those two values, and now I can enter an angle in here, or I can use the drop down arrow in order to use a slider to enter an angle. So if I do that you can see that I've really radically changed that. That's really quite a high angle there. So I certainly if I rotate that around I can see that a bit more clearly. If we wind that down a bit I think I'm going to want an angle somewhere around about one degree. If I'm happy with the way that looks I can hit close. I can just double click in the background to deselect that and I can make sure that looks the way I want it to. Next, if we come over to the front here, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to right mouse click. In this case, I'm going to choose front leg base. That's the component I want, the underneath component for the front leg. Again, I can now just click once on that. Click on the blue dot at the bottom there. Check the tilt box. We'll just click and drag this form out of the way. I'm going to click on the set button click around the toes for the anchor point around the top part here for where I'm going to tilt up to and in here I'm just going to specify an angle of one degree and hit the space bar. If I hit close and double click in the background we can see how that looks and I can keep adjusting the different components using the editing tools like that until I'm content um, with the way the finished part looks and I'm ready to start doing the sculpting process which at this stage I think I am. So you have a copy of the file in this state. Let's go ahead and save it into the project folder. Go up to File, Save As, and I'm just going to call this uh, file Lioness underscore um, basic model. So that's just showing us that it's a model that hasn't had any sculpting or um, other editing other than building up these shapes and the tilting that you've just seen me do there. Let's go ahead and save that. And if you wanted to, for the sculpting part of the demo now, you could go ahead and load that file in and continue from here with that. And this is actually an important transitional stage because we're going to go from being able to work with the individual components and select them and edit them as you saw me do there to needing to join the components together so they act as a single object that will allow me to work with them much more organically. To do this though, I typically don't want to delete the existing set of components I have. I'm better to take a copy of those and work on that copy, so if I need to I can always come back to the original set of shapes. This process is quite straightforward. I just need to make sure that I have all the components visible that I want to combine into a single object. So that's everything that I have at this point here. Then what I want to do uh, typically is make myself a new level, so I'm going to right mouse click and say insert new level 
and then we'll right mouse click on this and just rename that level as combined model. Now with that level selected, I'm going to come up and click on the icon here that will create a component from the visible model. So it's going to create a single component from everything I can see in the 3D view. If I click on that now, it's just going to put that component into that new level that I had there. So we'll just right mouse click on that and we'll rename that component and call that Lion to Edit. And at this stage, what I want to do is undraw all the rest of my components here. So the easiest way to do that is click on this component at the top and just say show only this and that will automatically undraw everything except that component and or that level rather in this case that I was over. So let's go ahead and select our component there. And the first operation I want to do is just a general smoothing to blend uh, out some of the sharp edges in this case. Then we're going to go in with the sculpting tools and be much more specific about our edits. So as I say, with that selected, I'm going to come up and click on the icon to apply the smoothing filter here. The software will automatically process that and it will apply a kind of um, medium level smoothing to the job. So I can see that looks okay, but it's probably getting rid of a little bit more detail than I'd care for. So I'm just going to pull the slider back a little bit there, back that off a bit, maybe go so that it's around about a quarter of the way between minimum and maximum. If I'm happy with the way that looks, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Um, before I do that, just note here that preserve transparency is checked. You want to make sure that's checked if you don't want to blur between the edge of the model and the modeling plane. So that checked around about a quarter of the way through. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So let's go ahead and make sure our component that we want to edit is selected. And then we'll come up and click on the icon to go into the sculpting tools. Within the function here at the top, you can see there are five ways we can interact with the model. We also have an option here to help us adjust the view to rotate to a different angle or to zoom in. Coming down, we can see sliders, which will allow us to adjust diameter, strength and smoothness of whatever tool that we have selected. And then some additional options towards the bottom here. To use the sculpting tools, you choose the option you want from the top here. So here we have the smooth option selected. You can adjust things like diameter and strength. So here I'll just kind of click and select sort of mid-range choices. Come across and you can see in the 3D view there, the area I'm going to sculpt is represented by um, a circle. Now at the moment, nothing will happen with this when I come over the model because I'm not clicking the mouse. To activate it, I need to click the mouse and you'll see that the circle changes colour. And now as I move over the model, hopefully you can see there that that is smoothing out the area that I'm rubbing back and forward over there. It's very important to understand that the sculpting will only have an effect when I'm clicking the mouse and when I'm moving it. It's kind of a little bit like sandpaper maybe if you want to think of an analogy for it. So there are various ways we can sculpt. You saw there how we can smooth something. We have the smudge, deposit, remove and undo. And then we also talked about the controls that we've got at the bottom here. Now as well as accessing them from the form, if I want to stay in the 3D view of this sculpting, I can use shortcut keys to move between them. You'll notice that there are numbers next to the different tools here. And if I click on the number keys on the keyboard, you'll notice that I switch to smooth if I hit two, deposit if I hit three, remove for four, undo five, and the twiddle view for six. So I'm just going to hit one to go back to smooth there. Also, I can control the diameter and the strength using the arrow keys on the keyboard. If I hit the up and down arrow, I can control the strength. So that's up to increase the strength, down to reduce it, and then the right arrow to increase the diameter, and the left arrow to reduce the diameter. I can also do that using the mouse wheel. If I go ahead and roll the mouse wheel back and forwards, you'll see that the diameter will increase and decrease. And if I do that while holding shift down, then it's going to adjust the strength for me as well. So lots of ways I can control the sculpting using shortcut keys if I want to keep the cursor in the 3D view. So let's go ahead and do some more sculpting on our model. The first thing I want to do is just go around and blend together some of the edges using this smooth option. So I have smooth selected. I want to reduce the diameter slightly. So I'm going to use the, the 
left arrow on the keyboard to just move that back. Maybe we'll go down to something around about 70, 75. And also we'll reduce the strength with the down arrow there. And as I say, you could also use the mouse to go over and just run the sliders back and forward as well. So with those values selected here for diameter and strength, I'm not going to adjust the smoothness at the moment. I'm just going to keep this kind of general value here. I'm going to click and just start going back and forward over some of the edges of the model. So here I'm just holding the mouse key down and just running around some of these edges in order to start to blend between them. Now the beauty of the sculpting tools is I can really control how much I alter something. So here you can see we're not making huge changes at the moment, we're making quite subtle changes between these areas and that I'm happy with that and as I look at, at the different parts of this and decide I might want to do um, larger changes then I can always go in and choose a, a higher value for the strength. At the moment I'm just carefully working my way around the edge trying not to smooth out too much of the internal detail here and just blending those in. Now as I say if I look at areas like the leg here and the top of the leg here I may want to blend those a little more so I'm going to increase the diameter and the strength or maybe come up to diameter close to 100 and strength around 50 and we'll just come up to the top here and just click and move the mouse back and forward in order to really blend those areas in. So really trying to smooth that out there to create a more natural transition between those different areas of the, the muscle of the animal here. And the sculpting is very much something that you, you get a feel for and really have to play with and practice to become particularly proficient with it. In this case I'm using a mouse to control the cursor but if you are really serious about sculpting and intend to do this a lot in your model making then we'd certainly recommend getting some kind of pen tablet to help you control it better. Um, typically we would use one of the Wacom branded tablets but I believe there are others available that would work too. So I've smoothed a number of edges. Next what I'd like to do is come and use the smudge tool. The smudge tool allows me to kind of drag material back and forward from high areas into low and from low into high. So what I want to do is zoom in on the area of the tail here. The safest way to do that is to switch to the twiddle view. This will just make sure that I don't uh, accidentally sculpt anything in the 3D view. Now I can click both um, mouse keys left and right up around the tail drag that over to the middle of the screen, let go and then hold the right mouse key down and move the mouse away from me to zoom in and then again I can pan that with both mouse keys there. Now we can switch to the smudge tool and what I want is just a small circle here so that I can just add a little bit more shape to the top of the tail. So I need to really reduce the diameter I can do that with the mouse wheel in the 3D view here so we'll go down to something around about 30ish um, there Strength will up to around about 50 and then I'm just going to click outside of the model and just drag in here and just keep clicking and dragging and letting go do the same up the top. So what I'm doing is just controlling the direction so I can drag from high to low as I am doing now or from low to high by going in this direction here. So I'm happy with the way that looks. Now I want to zoom out again. So I'm going to go back to the twiddle view. Now I could just hit um, F on the keyboard to fit that into um, the view window. What I'd like to do is some similar smudging around the toes as well. So I'm going to click with both mouse keys again down the bottom, drag and then zoom in with the right mouse key down to the area on the feet here. I'm going to switch back to the smudge tool and in here again we can just drag these out, move on to the middle one here and the bottom and then we could also cut these in from the edge as well if we want to increase the definition so really very subjective um, process of just doing as much or as little as you want in order to uh, add or remove detail. Again if we go back to the twiddle tool let's right mouse click to zoom out come over to the front foot and zoom in here go back to the smudge tool and again we can do similar just dragging 
this material down and then just dragging in to add definition into the pause there Once you're happy with the way that looks, then we can come up and hit the uh, Z icon here to go back to a view down the Z axis there. And at any stage, if we're pleased with the way it looks, we can come down and click on the button here to keep what we've done so far. And that creates sort of like a temporary save within the sculpting so that if I now hit discard, I'll come back to this particular stage rather than going back right to the beginning again. And just to demonstrate that, if I was to take the smudge now, big diameter and uh, come up and sort of make a mistake, something I didn't want to do like I've done there, I can hit discard hit yes and that'll just go back to the point where we were when we hit the keep button there as you can see so it's retained the edits for the toes and the tail and the other things we've done but just got rid of what we've done since we hit that button now a couple more smudge operations here just to blend the legs into the body a bit I'm going to go with a, a much larger diameter here but reduce the strength so that I'm having a more subtle effect so maybe we'll go down to around 30 diameter something around maybe a little bit bigger, 190, 200. I'm just going to click and drag this and you can see you can have quite large effects on things but because I've turned the strength right down they're a lot more subtle so I'm able to really drag that shape out and start to blend it in. I can just hold it down and go back and forward there and I can do the same here, just click and drag the shoulder into the body again just click and move back and forward in order to blend these shapes together and get quite a good transition there using the sculpting tools. Again, I'm going to hit keep at this stage. I click on twiddle again. Click both left and right mouse key on the head. Move it over to the middle, then right mouse key and zoom in. Just click both again to move that over a bit there. Just get it so that the head is in the middle of the job. Now I'm going to come in on the head and do a bit more sculpting here. So again, we're going to come back to smudge. We need a much smaller diameter, so maybe something around about 50. And you really just judge this based on the size of your job. We'll up the strength a little bit there. And what I want to do at this point is just click and go back and forward over some of these areas to just clean up some of the creasing that we've picked up there from having such a, a sort of odd shape that we've created our um, base shape from. So we'll clean that up first. Next I'm going to come and make the diameter a bit smaller and the strength a bit higher. So just click and drag material out in order to form the jawline a little bit better here. Just click and drag that up there and also the nose in this case so we'll click and drag that in order to just spread it out a bit and increase the diameter a bit there and just drag out the middle part of the face here as well and just sort of smooth that end piece off so I'm happy with the way that looks I may want to um, bring in this part of the face a bit more as well here so again we'll just create more of a blend between there just by holding the mouse down and moving that back and forward and what I'd like to do up the top here is just firm up the eyebrow a bit so again we'll just reduce the diameter in order to make that kind of work for us there just dragging that out over the top in order to strengthen the top part of the head and we'll do the same with the cheek here as well, just dragging this down, blend that in. And then 
I'd like to come in and add some material for the eye. So now instead of using the smooth or smudge, I'm going to hit deposit and we'll just use the mouse key in order to reduce the size of that down. So I'll make it something around about 30. Strength I want to reduce right down as well. I'm just going to click a few times in there in order to add some material to put an eye. Again, if I'm happy with the way that looks, I can hit keep. And finally here, I may want to take some material away for the ear, so I'm going to go to remove and again we'll just reduce the strength down maybe to around about 30 um, diameter, say around 40-ish, and just click and just drag that back and forward to hollow out some material from within what would be the ear. Now I'm going to switch back to the smudge tool and I'm just going to work on kind of blending that up there. smoothing that off and getting this sort of transition I'd like between the head and the ear. I say it does take a fair bit of practice the sculpting tools just to get the feel for it but there's really no substitute for anything other than practicing with this. Last thing I'm going to do actually is just to blend the neck in a little so we'll turn the strength right down, diameter up and just go back and forward here in order to blend the face shape into the neck there and get the transition I'm looking for. If I'm happy with that I can hit keep and OK. I'll just take a look at how the model looks there. Pretty happy with that. I think the last thing I may want to do is just very gently smooth around the nose here. So we'll just go back into the sculpting tools, switch on the smooth, just turn the strength right down there and just go in there, keep and OK. And that completes what I'd like to show you in this tutorial. Of course I could continue to sculpt this um, essentially forever if I wanted because it is such an iterative and subjective process. Um, really it's just a case of continuing to sculpt and work the model until you're happy with the way it looks. I'm happy with this so I'm going to go up to File, Save As and in the project folder for this particular example we'll call this um, Lioness Model and go ahead and hit Save and that concludes this video.